Hello and welcome. I am Raghav and today we are going to learn how to use the Smart XPath plugin in Catalon Studio. This is going to be very easy and very interesting. And before I go into the steps, let us understand what is a Smart XPath plugin. So if you go to Catalon Studio's website, I will go to Catalon Studio, search for Catalon Studio and I'll just go to the website which is catalon.com and here if you go here on the plugins you can see there is a plugins section here and here is the page for Catalon Studio plugins let me also copy this and I will make all these notes available in the description section of this video so I'll just copy this URL here and here you can go to store.catalon.com where you will find all the plugins and here you can see there are some free and paid plugins and this is a auto healing smart xpath plugin if i click here so here you can see some documentation for this plugin so basically this is a plugin that helps us to locate web elements in case there is any change in the locators or the properties of the web element so here you can see reduce test script maintenance cost by using the set of xpath values generated by smart xpath generator so this is catalon smart xpath generator that generates some different attributes and locators whenever you do a recording and then the smart xpath plugin uses all these features to identify your locator now the first thing is I have to install it so I will click on this try it for free make sure that you are logged in with your account on this website so I will click on sign in and you have to use the same email and password that you have used for Catalon Studio so I'm just going to sign in in my account and now I'm signed in you can see here so I will just go here and click on this smart xpath plugin and now in my case I already have it let me show you I will just uninstall and install it again so I will again install it and I will say accept and install and you can see it is said it is saying plugin successfully installed now I have to go to my catalon studio and you can see I'm using the latest version which is 6.1.2 and these plugins and Catalon store is available since version 6 I believe so make sure that you have the uh, latest version and you can see the plugin store here so plugin store go here and go to manage plugins and here you can see all the plugins that are available for your account so I have this auto healing smart xpath I also had this which is which I'm not using as of now but this is the one we are going to see in this tutorial so this is auto healing smart xpath and I can also go back to my catalon studio and here uh, let me just also see so we I will say reload plugins and you can see here all these plugins are available now so this is the auto healing smart xpath i will close this and this is the icon so you can see this is the smart xpath i will click here and i can disable or enable from here so i will enable this and now this is enabled so this was the first step that we have done we have added the plugin now step number two is i will do recording of a web test record a web test so I will go to this I will go to my test cases so this is a new project I will do a right click and say new I will say new test case and I will say this is test 1 and now I will go to this record web so I will record a very quick test and I will show you how we can use the smart xpath so this is the demo site for catalon let me just use this I will click on chrome and it will start the recording and you can see the chrome browser is open here and I can now start recording so I will click on this make appointment button and then I can use this username and password 
so I will give this username John Doe and this is not a password and click on login and it logs in so I'll just stop this for now I will stop this and I will run this to make sure everything is recorded properly so this is running fine until now it should click on make appointment and then it should log in and yes everything is okay so this is all fine I will click on OK and these are all the objects and I will click OK and here are the objects so the test is now recorded and we also have these objects now if you go to any of these objects under the object repository that are recorded you will see that there are a lot of properties or a lot of expats recorded by Catalon Studio and if you see carefully for example if you see this this is a uh, XPath where which is using the ID property and then again this is using ID property however you see some uh, XPaths like this which have the name XPath neighbor now this is unique in Catalon Studio so Catalon Studio also uh, records the neighbors and tries to identify the element with the help of its neighbors so if you see if you see this application let me just show you the application again I will just go to the same application and I'll click on make appointment and you can see this is the login button that we are seeing here this is the login button properties or locators and here you can see there are some neighbors for example username uh, text box password box all these are neighbors of this login button and you can see it is actually identifying with all this so password username and then cura health services this is what is here so all the preceding and following elements are recorded and we can identify it based on its neighbors as well so let us try to run this test and see if everything is fine I will run this on a Chrome browser so this has opened the Chrome browser and yes this is running fine now let's make some changes I will go again to this button login object and here uh, let me just go here on this first xpath value here and I will say I will just change the ID which is actually wrong okay I have just changed this ID so I have changed this to btn hyphen login one which is wrong and let us see what happens now so I will try to run the test again and before doing that let me go to project settings and here I will go to execution and I will just make the timeout to 5 seconds so that it does not wait long apply and ok and I'll go back to my test and again run this on a chrome browser and let us see what happens this time so we have changed the locator for login button and we will see if it is able to identify login button so it actually identified it uh, let me just go to smart xpath and if I go to xpath auto healing logs as of now everything is okay let me just go to this button login again and here yeah let me just change it here as well so that now it should be changed and I will save this and now I will run this again let us see the output now so it goes to Chrome browser and yes and see it is having some problem in identifying login it is still waiting and let us see if smart xpath is able to do its work or not so yes it actually finally clicked on the button so what happened let us see the logs so here this was where it clicked and it was successful it waited for some time because we had changed the values here we had made btn login 1 which is incorrect but still it was able to identify the element based on the neighbors and other uh, 
properties that we have and let us now go to this smart xpath and let us go to the xpath auto healing logs so in case smart xpath has done any work here it will be displayed in the auto healing logs and yes so you can see this was the object and this was the broken path so it has actually identified the broken path which is btn login 1 and then it is also proposing the path or the correct path which is now available on the application so you can see this is what is being now used or this is what it used to identify and here you can look at the snapshot by going to preview and if I click here so as of now this is broken so that will be fixed later but that is fine and you can approve it and then you can click OK or approve all and this it is also saying please refresh the object repository to see xpath values updated after approval so after we approve this path should be available which is uh, saying section at id login and i will say approve and ok now i will go back to my object here and you can see it has actually taken the new xpath and I can also refresh this and it is actually available here so you can see this ID relative and this is what is being used so this is what is proposed by smart xpath and you can see it was able to identify the object even when the path was broken let us look at a more uh, deeper example so I will go to this website which is a uh, I have created a dummy web page to show you exactly how it will happen in real time so let me try to copy this URL and I will create a new test case in Catalon Studio I will say new test case test2 and here I am going to again record and this is what I am using automation step by step dot blogspot dot com and I will use a chrome browser and yes it is here so I am just going to add an email a password and I will say sign up of course this is a dummy page so it just does not go anywhere and yes that's it and I will close this I will stop this I will try to run this to check everything is fine so it goes to automation step by step adds email yes it is adding the email the password repeat password and click on sign up and that's it so this, this is running fine I will say ok and ok to add it into the test and you can see the test is added and here we have the object repository with all the objects here I can just run this I am running this on a chrome browser and this is running fine now if I go to the objects and let me just go to this email uh, text box object you can see it is identifying the email with the name attribute which is email1 so if I go to this object I will do a right click and say inspect and here you can see the name here is email1 so that is fine it is able to identify with this email1 now let's suppose there is some change at the backend and the developer uh, changed this name attribute or the value for this name and this happens uh, very frequently that there are some changes at the backend due to which our xpaths break or our locators break so I will do a change so this is because this is my own page I can make the changes I will go to this layout and here I have this register page here I will go to edit and here I'll just search for where is email1 and yes here is the name email1 I'm just going to change it to email so I have changed the name for this email text box to email I'll say save and yes this is saved and if I now refresh my page 
and I will again try to inspect this element and you can see as of now this is not changed let me refresh it again yes now I will check this the name of this element and you can see this is now changed to email so the name is now changed so what will happen to our test now so this is a real world scenario you have created your test you have identified all your objects and now there is some changes at the back end so when you run your test again it will break but now because we are using the smart xpath what will happen let us see I will run this again on a chrome browser so it goes to the website and yes let us see it, if it is able to find the email text box and it is trying to find it out and yes eventually it was able to find it and it has executed it so uh, we will again go to our xpath auto healing logs and you can see this new entry here so here this was the broken xpath which was name equals email one and this is what the new path which is proposed and I will again approve this I will say I'll just say approve all and OK and if I go to my email object you can see the new xpath is here so this is how we are able to use the smart xpath plugin if I write the steps here step 3 will be actually step 2 will be here step 2 is enable smart xpath so you have to enable the smart xpath from here so we have to enable auto healing and then step 3 will be record step 4 will be make changes to any object and run and check or I should say step 5 will be check smart or auto healing logs of the smart xpath plugin and approve changes so this is how you can use the smart xpath plugin and I hope this will be very useful in our automation because uh, we know that a lot of times our test cases break because of these changes in the object properties or xpaths so now using this smart xpath we will be able to do a much better automation and they will be very less failures. I hope this session was useful for you thank you for watching